Hello, my name is Marissa, or Title Zora Cosplay, and you are listening to Tin Pod Radio. You can follow me on Instagram at Title Zora or on Facebook at Title Zora Cosplay. Hello, I'm Nicole. Uh, my company is called Night Owl Designs. I make pop culture themed jewelry and housewares like light switch covers. I make Christmas ornaments, uh, pin back buttons, magnets, stuff like that, all in the pop culture theme. And how did you get started doing that? So Night Owl started 10 years ago this year, like like recently, the last like week or so. Um, so it basically started, I've had trouble sleeping my whole life, Night Owl. That's where that comes from. Um, and 10 years ago, my insomnia was particularly bad. Uh, like, really, really bad. So, you know, you have all this time to fill in the wee hours of the night when you should be sleeping like a person. Um, and I started fiddling around with making things. I've always been kind of crafty. I've always liked artsy stuff. I've always liked pop culture. So it just kind of happened that that was kind of where I gravitated towards when it came to subject matter. Um, and I started out making stuff for myself that then transitioned into gifts for friends for birthdays, holidays, just because gifts. And then a friend of mine who is an artist was going to be vending an event, like a craft fair, essentially here in Philadelphia. And she asked me and another friend if we would all share a space. And I thought that was crazy. I was like, that's ridiculous. What What am I going to do? I'm going to bring my stuff and people are going to give me money for it. That's crazy. Um, but I went. And at the time, I was also making these bowls out of old scratched vinyl records. And I sold two of them. And I thought it was like the most amazing thing in the world <laughs> that somebody gave any kind of a crap about the stuff I was fiddling around with in the middle of the night. Um, but it kind of just kept going from there and just kind of evolved into this this thing that I have now. And it's bizarre and weird. And when I think about it, I'm just like, how did this even happen? <laughs> Uh, so, like, what was it like selling the first time you sold it at an event? It was weird. It was an outdoor event, which I was very unprepared for. <laughs> uh, no tent, no sunscreen, <laughs> uh, no idea how much of a nemesis wind is to craft fairs. I had no idea. Neither did my friend. We were just, like, completely crazy. And midway through the day, another vendor from, like, way down the way came over and literally gave me his sunscreen. And he was like, this is <laughs> this is crazy. You can't be in the sun any longer. I was just turning, like, this ridiculous shade of red. Um, but all those things considered, it was it was cool. It was It was a light switch, I think, where I was like, oh, the thing I think this is, isn't exactly how I thought it was. I thought this kind of event was for fine artists and people with art degrees and this very limited view of what I thought this was. And it wasn't. It was all kinds of people making all kinds of cool stuff in ways and media that I didn't even think was possible in like a commercial kind of way. Um, so it was it was definitely it reevaluated what I thought these events were. Uh, did you have an art background before you started making items? So when I was in, like, growing up, I always loved art. I loved making things. I loved crafty stuff. Um, all through high school, I was in the art room, like, all the time. All the time. My art teacher was my favorite teacher, hands down. Like, to the point where there was a handful of us that would, like, we would eat lunch in the art room. It was where we were. I'd skip gym class and go to the art room. But when I got to college, I took no art classes, I had all these art supplies that I never touched. And so I have an art background in terms of like that. But like once I got to college, it kind of just disappeared for me from a while, for a while until I got out of college, which is strange to think about because I loved it so much. But I just kind of put it away. When you felt the urge to do art again, was it like an, an explosion? You talked about a light switch being clicked. Was it like I'm making so much materials and stuff like that. I know I've had those times when it's like, I can't produce enough. Like, there's not enough time in a day. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the, the kind of nice thing about the insomnia was there were all these hours that I wasn't utilizing. Like, I would watch a ton of movies, I'd read a bunch of books, and I would make a bunch of stuff. And then I would go to work, and then I'd come home, and I'd make a bunch of stuff. And it's it became this 
like you said, like kind of like I couldn't make enough. Like I was just like, oh, okay. And then I have this idea and let me do this. And I don't like the way this looks and I can be better than this. And I know I can make this better. And just, I just kind of kept at it. I know, like, I'm also somebody who doesn't sleep very well at night, and a lot of people are like, you produce a lot of different things, and why you do it, and stuff like that, and I'm like, well, I'd be staring at the wall if I wasn't doing it. Yeah. Yeah, like, it's better to be productive in some way, and also, I'm not a person who's afraid of just making stuff, and I don't, like, just throwing it out there, making it. I used to say my writing was like, uh like a sushi writing it was raw and i'd put it out on the internet and i did that for a long time i would do it and i just put it out there and everybody knows you put stuff on the internet people will give you your opinion about it really <laughs> <laughs> it's so true it's such a scary thing when you talk about putting your stuff and selling it that 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 distance between making the the, the selling it is that a big gap for you do you always uh, have in mind i'm going to sell it or you have stuff you don't automatically sell or there's definitely stuff i don't automatically sell there's stuff that i keep just for me there's stuff that i keep just for my girlfriend stuff that i give to friends um the the shift into doing more events and having an online store definitely sometimes especially in like busy like busy busy times like christmas for instance it can feel overwhelming because it i always kind of feel like i never have enough i never have enough stuff and the stuff that i know i'm out of i feel like i am kind of obsessed about it when i'm out of it at an event and i'm like i don't have this thing that i know is a thing that has sold well for me in the past like i need to have something similar to that um, and that disconnect is weird because it definitely shifts my viewpoint in those moments, if that makes sense. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Uh, how do you do, like, because you do a lot of pop culture stuff, and, yeah. like, from the past and, and some from the present and stuff. How do you go from, like, what you know will sell to what you want to make? So I've been really lucky in that is that I don't make anything that I don't like. I don't love, um, with the exception being custom orders. Like I do custom orders. Um, I get a lot of flack for this. I've never seen Twin Peaks. Mm -hmm. I'm like the only person on the planet. (laughs) I've never seen Twin Peaks. I made a lot of Twin Peaks jewelry and it's, and and Christmas ornaments and it's all custom stuff. And I'm always honest. I'm always like, listen, I have no idea what I'm doing here. I don't know (laughs) these people, but now I'm very familiar with what certain characters names are. But in that case, I feel like it's not so disingenuous. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I wouldn't feel good about making stuff like just from me of subject matter. I don't know. Um, it kind of just like, like, I'm a fan. I'm a fan first. So part of the draw that has become the draw of doing events is talking to people about the movies and the pop culture that I like, like the weird stuff that I didn't think anybody knew or cared about. But me, there are people out there that like that kind of stuff. And that's awesome. And I want to talk about it. So I feel like if I have stuff on my table that I don't have like a fan reaction to people know that and they they're they're not going to let you get away with that. People fans are brutal. (laughs) They'll test you. (laughs) Uh, When it comes to like producing like uh, handcrafted materials or like even like just an independent artist period, you're not going to have like a huge stockpile of like stock somewhere. When it comes right. to materials, how do you decide when you stop making stuff? Even if it, it, I guess when it's not popular, we all like sometimes don't keep continue making it. But how do you what? decide even if something's popular, I'm not gonna make anymore? I probably hang on to certain things way longer than I should <laughs> <laughs> because I like it. Um, certain things where I'm just like, I, I love this so much and I'm so happy with how this turned out, and then it just like sits at my table forever. <laughs> Um, and then if eventually I do sell it or I'll like mark it down, then I have to like rationalize that in my head. I'm like, well, this took me like a ridiculous amount of time to sell. Don't make something similar. Move on. But it's, it's hard because I'm just like, but this is a thing I really like. And why, why aren't other people thinking it's great? Um, (laughs) or at least like, why don't other people like this, this weird movie that nobody cares about but me? Um, so that I, I probably hold on a little too long certain times, I think. That's a, that's a, that's a work in progress. <laughs> yeah. 
and anybody that's creative and and make things sometimes you'll find that the stuff you have passion for hugely other people aren't as much attracted to yeah yeah and it, and it can be like mm, i wish they liked this as much as they like this <laughs> yeah there's definitely been things i was like oh i can do better than this this is not like i'm not super thrilled with how something comes out and my girlfriend are like will be like no like this we should put this out and I put it out, and it's the first thing that sells. And I'm like, okay, well, I guess, like, you know, you're your own worst critic. Because somebody else thought it was great. So, uh, What's been, like, your, I don't say your biggest selling item, because you probably have, like, thousands of different items. But what's yeah. what's kind of, like, your biggest, like, thing? Is it buttons? Is it, like, uh, the ornaments? or? So it's definitely, a, I think it's a good balance. Buttons, for sure. Um, it used to be, I make two size buttons. I make one and a quarter inch and I make two and a quarter inch. And for a long time, nobody would touch my two and a quarter inch buttons. So I never, I didn't have as many made because people weren't interested. And now it's flipped and I sell way more two and a quarter inch buttons. I think people are getting more comfortable with being, having like a bold statement of the thing they like Mm -hmm. on their person. Um, but ornaments, ornaments, at Christmas time, I like they have done super well for me. People really like them, and I'm so grateful for that. And I sell like I feel like I can't make enough ornaments at Christmas time. I'm I, every year I start making them earlier and earlier to try and like give myself a cushion so I'm not slammed at Christmas time. And it's never early enough. Last year I started making them in August, and I feel like July is when it's going to happen this year. Uh, of the stuff you make, what takes the longest? Like. Uh, ornaments or which thing the light switch covers light switch covers the light switch covers they are a multiple step process that is a lot of sealing and drying in between each step so it's a lot of waiting and then a lot of meticulous work and then a lot of waiting again so i always seem to underestimate how long it's going to take me i'll be like i have a day off from work it's going to be light switch day let's do this and then i get like a quarter of the pile that I thought I was going to get done, done. And it's like four in the morning. And I'm like, all right, well, it's going to take me a while. (laughs) Uh, Do you find like you like to do the more like completely hands-on stuff? Uh, I don't know what kind of button maker you have, but some of them like you can produce quite a lot of them at once. Do you like to do that type stuff or are you just like? So the, my button maker is one of like, it's a hand press and it's one at a time. Um, and I find such like a therapeutic element with that. It's such a meticulous, like tedious task, but it's precise and it's repetitive and I love it. And like my girlfriend can't do it. She'll make 10 and she'll be like, this is, I hate this <laughs> new thing, have to do a new thing. And I can, I can press buttons all night and just zone out and do it in front of the television. And I love it. It's, it's almost like like the therapeutic element of the more stressful processes of other things I make. <laughs> I know, like, uh, I have a button maker, which seems like a lot of people have one. <laughs> like, oh, one. yeah. I yeah. also find it, like, kind of fun just to sit down and just, like, make a few, um, like, just print some stuff off and do it. And it, 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 it is kind of just fun just to sit there and do it. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Uh, do you find, like, when people, like, come up to your booth and stuff that, uh, that they're automatically, like, oh, I want this thing, or, like, or they're just searching through everything? It's definitely, I think, a mixed bag, and a lot of that has to do with where and what the event is. You know, my stuff's super kitschy, and that's not always everyone's deal, and I'm, there's definitely been events I've done in the past that, like, this is not my audience, and that's fine. Um, people don't always say nice things, but that's all right. Um, big girl, I can take it. But at events that like I feel like are my people, you know, I feel like when it comes to buttons, people want to look through all of them. They'll like they'll dig. They want they want to find the one that's theirs. They'll like dig through an entire bin of thousands of buttons if I have it. Um, but if somebody spots something that like is what brings them to the table, that's what they're, they're leaving with. That's the thing that they want. That's what they're going with. But if they're just like idly browsing and stumble upon me, then they'll look more thoroughly. I feel like, uh, I I know y'all have attended event. I think it's like a punk flea market Mm -hmm. thing that you did. Uh, I know a lot of people are comparing like, uh, some of the making style and making art today as a very punk style. Do you see that it's almost like a, there's an artistic community that's almost like a punk artistic community that's coming up with people doing zines again and stuff like that? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's super exciting because I feel like there's this real DIY 
like like you said about the zines, zines are like coming back. A lot of people are pressing buttons. They're doing a lot of, like, for lack of a better word, like, messy art. Like, it's mm-hmm. not fine art. It's not, you know, like, still life and oil paintings and stuff. And it's a lot of that grittier grittier stuff. It's a lot of political art. And that, there, there's a, a lot of punk elements in that. There's a lot of anti-establishment elements in that. There's a lot of mistrust with our government right now. And I feel like that's coming out in art. And all that like subversive pop culture stuff too. I just think I think it's like right there, and everyone's kind of getting more comfortable with it, like like participating in it. That maybe would be a little shy about it previously, because you know I feel like like early '90s was like really good for that, where it's like you know like rebel rebel girl stuff and like zines and like being very outspoken. And then there was like this kind of pullback. I feel like especially after like 9-11 where it was just like very like professional and, you know, a little more buttoned up and a little more uh, like nervous about being othered and being the outcast. Um, And I feel like it's coming back around to like people not caring. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think that's cool. Uh, I also seen it like, uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of the the female pro wrestling group, pro wrestling Eve. They're like a punk uh, female wrestling uh, company and a pro wrestling company in the UK. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't, I I wouldn't have been able to pick their name out of line, but when you started describing them, I had. And uh, you're seeing punk uh, uh, stuff appear in like, like that. And you're seeing it appear in, like you said, a more, almost a street art handmade not finished type stuff do you yeah. think that's almost a not really a pushback as being anti-technology and anti-internet stuff because we all use that for that stuff okay. too but it's almost like okay i don't need that to do what i want to do too yeah yeah i do i do i think that's a really accurate description because i feel like like for we're all like a slave to our phones you know we all have these smartphones you know like you and i interact on instagram like it's it is what it is But I definitely feel like there is that pushback of people wanting to feel like they can disconnect in that way, but reconnect in a more what what people feel like is a more tangible, real life way. And that uh, that's art. You know, it's a lot of a lot of it. It's art. Yeah. And I think uh, a lot of it with like your work and like uh, even go back to uh, like pro wrestling. They're also saying like one of their big sayings is like it's not for everybody and they don't care that it's not for everybody. If you don't like the fact that they're uh, exclusive, I mean, like uh, welcoming of everybody in the community, they don't care. They're saying it's not for you. And do you think that's one of the elements that punk it comes into a lot of uh, art now? It's being bended by individuals is like, we don't care. We're just doing what we want to. We don't care if you don't like it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I feel like there's... There's a little bit of, there's, it, there's like a breath in that, you know, like mm-hmm. it's like an exhale. You're like, there's freedom in that because if you, if you understand that you don't need to please everybody, you can just do what it is that you want to do. And then the people that respond to that, whether it's positive or negative, like you put out like truly what you want and what you get back is what you get back. And if people love that, then those are your, you like the people you connect with. And if people hate it, then, you know, that's too bad. Uh, can you remember one of your most positive responses to something you made? I can. I can, actually. It's funny that you said that, because like, the first thing that popped in my mind was, so maybe, I'm going to say it was probably like two or three years ago, um, my girlfriend and I vended this very small show uh, right here like in town. Like it, it was you know, an anniversary show for this local thrift store that we frequent called Philadelphia AIDS Thrift. Um, and they're this amazing organization that was founded by this one woman, Christina, um, where it's a, it's an enormous thrift store that has grown over the years. And all of the profits after like they have mostly volunteer base, but they have a handful of staff members that they pay. And then obviously, you know, like the bills, but all the other money goes to the Philadelphia AIDS Fund, helping people in the area that are living with HIV and AIDS. Um, and it's an amazing organization. So they were celebrating their, their anniversary. They have a big block party every year and we vend it every year. And I sold a switch plate to just a guy and, and he was younger than me. Like I'm, I'm 34. This was a couple years ago. He was definitely way younger than me. Um, and I sold it to him. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. About like a week later, I got an email from him with a picture of it up. And I was like, cool, I love customer photos. And he sent me this email that was basically saying that he had been having a really rough time. And it was kind of like, you know, everything that could go wrong went wrong. Like, you know, he lost his job and he ended his relationship and he was he was really struggling. 
And as a result, he kind of had been sleeping on his couch. He had kind of, like, abandoned his bed, had been, like, laying on his couch, like, up all night, watching television, just kind of, like, loafing in his living room. And he said that he put my light switch cover up in his bedroom as an attempt to try and make it more, like, friendly and welcoming and to kind of get him out of that depression and bring him back into his bedroom. And I thought that was the sweetest thing ever. And it was so overwhelming to me that, like, it was like a a switch plate from the labyrinth, you know, which is, I love the labyrinth, but I wouldn't have thought that it would have meant so much to somebody. But he used it to kind of reset himself and reset his environment. And it, it was so, it was just wonderful. And I think about that from time to time. And it just, like, it makes me so happy and so flattered that he wanted to use something that I made to facilitate that. So that's probably... Uh, you talk about like all the stuff like uh, that you like and it influences your art. Can you talk about something that's artistic that you really love? That's like something you go to that's a, like a comforting thing, like, like almost like a comfort blanket or something like that. Hmm. So probably I don't know if I I count this as artistic, mm-hmm. but um I read a lot. Books are my security blanket. I love books. And when I'm stressed, I feel like books are comfort for me. I love to read. So I feel like, I feel like it's, it's books. Uh, I'm like at Sumire. There's a few books that I'll listen to. Uh, I'll have on audiobook, like uh, mm-hmm. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I've listened to that 8 billion times, and I'll just have <laughs> it on sometimes. And it's just one of those things that, like, talking about not sleeping much, I can go yep. to sleep like when i'm listening to that because it shuts my brain down a bit yeah 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 Yeah. uh with uh, your art and the different things you're doing is there anything that you'd like to try to add to your repertoire huh that's a really good question um so actually so i've always i've always been asked for this and it's always something that i wanted to try and figure out how to do with my spin on it but to make like gauges Mm -hmm. for stretched ears and it's always something I've said, like, yeah, like I'm going to like this winter when things slow down, I'm going to do this. I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to figure out how to make it the way I want to make it. And I haven't. It's been years. And I, I really want to jump in that and figure that out for my style. Um, maybe maybe one day it'll actually happen. <laughs> Is there uh, I like to talk to uh, people also and ask them because a lot of people see other people's art and they get intimidated by it. They think they can't do it or they can't do it. Is there anything you've attempted and you just couldn't do it and it was like, okay, I can't do that. It's fine, but I can't do that. Yeah, so I definitely feel like like things when it comes to like sculpture like actual physical like like molding and sculpture like I it's just I've I've tried I've done it in high school and like I can get to a place where it's like I'm like all right this is okay with what I was intending to do but it's never where I want it it's not something that I feel like I have an eye for or the understanding of how to manipulate material in that way so it's just it's just not doesn't work for me (laughs) You talk about, like, the future. How do you see, like, you just relaunched your website not too long ago recently. Uh, What what do you think is the next step for you as far as, like, your store or selling your materials? So that's a really good question. Um, I feel like technology is my nemesis, which is why it took me so long to redo my website. Um, I'm not very computer savvy, uh, so that kind of stuff is really difficult for me to, like, all right, sit down, do this. Cause I get really frustrated. <laughs> and so I feel like if I'm optimistic, the next step for me is to get better at that because that's part of the deal. When you're trying to sell to people that are not going to interact with you in person, you have to have a web presence. And I'm great with my social, I'm with my social media when it comes to putting pictures of my cat up. She's great. <laughs> you know, I'm like, Hey, look at my cat. She's surly today. Like every day. But I'll forget for days at a time to post something that I made, which, you know, the intention is to get eyes on it so people want to see it and want to see more. I'm I'm terrible at it. <laughs> and I need to get better at that because that's how you make the connections now in today's world is, you know, website, social media. So my hope is that the next step is for me to not be a grandma about this. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, we talk about, like, not being able to switch off a little bit. Sometimes, like, like sleep thing and like, tons of ideas and stuff like that. Do you have, like, a thing you do to turn off for it? Because, like, I think uh, one of the things I've heard recently that's really good is people telling people, like, you don't have to post something today. Or you don't have to work on your art today. It's alright if you don't do it today. Uh, do you have something you can do that not artistic but can take you away and say okay i'm not doing this i'm fine i i am not i'm also not good at that <laughs> i i forget that you don't have to work on something 24 7 like every minute of your day doesn't have to be consumed with something that's like work ish um i have a i'd have another job you know that's my my like you know it's not a nine to five it's a retail job but it's still like you know your quote unquote nine to five job and then I feel like every other second that I'm not you know like at the grocery store or like committed to this other thing I'm working on night owl stuff and I'm not good at stopping that and my girlfriend is a blessing when it comes to stuff like that because she is the person who's like okay you need to stop like you need to take a breath it's okay to just sit and watch television it's okay to just sit and just step away from it and relax for a minute. So I'm not good at doing that for myself at this point. I need to work on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was the same way. I got to the point where I thought everything had to be content. Mm. Like, I wouldn't watch TV shows unless I could write a review about them. So I would wait and put stuff off because I was like, I need to write a review about this. Or I need to, I can't read this book right now because I don't have time to write about it or something like that. And I wasn't enjoying anything that I used to enjoy because everything was content to me. Yeah, that's that's... It's tough to separate once you're in that mode, right? Mm -hmm. uh, with uh, other artists and stuff, do you have a good artist community where you're at? I feel like like I do. I feel like I really do. Um, I'm from Philadelphia, and well, I'm originally from Jersey, but I live in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And Philadelphia is so like rich with artists and crafters, but also I feel like even just outside of the city, I have this amazing community of people that I respect and I love what they do and they're my friends. And even people that I was admired, I admired their work without knowing them and would like purchase stuff from them and then would eventually meet in person and then become friendly with. And that's such a validating feeling um, because it's a, it's a weird animal, this life of like selling your stuff at these events. And it's nice to know that other people get it because it is. It's like not everyone's great at these things. Some people are not nice at all. Um, and so it's nice to have people that care and that you can touch base with and kind of brings you back into like reality of like, oh, no, like people are they're great people. It's good. It's fine. You're comforting and you're home and it's great. Yeah, it's it's weird sometimes when you're surprised when you meet a good person. <laughs> yeah, it's, not, it's, not it's it's so it's such a sad reality. <laughs> and the things people will say to you when they it's like it's similar to when you work a retail job, which I also do, so it's like a two hole for me. But you're standing on one side of the table with a whole bunch of stuff that you, you know, spent hours working on and people will say the craziest things and you're just like, I'm standing right here. I'm a person, you know. Why would you ever say that? But okay, cool. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, when I used to write reviews on websites and stuff from like movies and stuff, and people used to say, like, you're not very good at this because you find something you like and everything. And one of the reasons why I was like, I do is because I'm like, people don't make crap on purpose. Nobody makes right. something bad on purpose. They're trying to make something good. <laughs> right. Like, why is, that a ne why is that a bad thing to find something good? Why is that a negative? I feel like people people really get their ego stroked by being the like mean kid at the lunch table on the internet, and I don't understand it. Uh, you were talking about people coming and saying to stuff to you at your table. Uh, one of the things I talk to people about is things that you shouldn't say to artists that all <laughs> artists get said to them, and yeah. and I like to get your reaction to a couple of these things. Sure. Uh, like one other one is like uh did you actually make this oh yeah get that a lot <laughs> that a lot uh and another one that a lot of people get is like uh i could probably do this oh man that's if i had a nickel for every time i heard that <laughs> i wouldn't be working my retail job right now <laughs> it's amazing how many people will say that it's 
it's mind blowing because my my reaction I always want to be well then then go ahead because you're not going to you're not going to make this like this in this way and it's just so dismissive and so arrogant and I would never say that to anybody like what, what the things that people just like spew at you you're just like I did, no filter to like make that not come out but okay sure. Uh, another one is when people try to talk you down in price. Mm, yep. <laughs> yep. I find my prices to be, I'm told consistently by people that make things that my prices are too low. Um, but I like my stuff to be accessible. You know, I want people to be able to buy it and enjoy it. Um, and that's not always, you know, the most profitable for me, but that's okay. Uh, but yeah, people people will always try and talk you down. If you could have like a, you know, buy one thing, get 25 free, and they'll ask you for a 26. <laughs> like, they don't care. Well, it reminds me of like uh, my local comic book shop. Uh, they were doing free comic book day. And somebody went up to the owner and said, uh, what's the lowest price thing you got here? And he was like, the free stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. It's oh. like, okay, like you're not satisfied. Somebody's giving you something for free and you're still not satisfied. Hey, at that point, there's nowhere else to go. Like, <laughs> god. Uh, with, we are talking about, like, uh, earlier about, like, the punk scene and art and, like, political statements. Do you find yourself that you feel you have to do stuff that's kind of political or, or do you steer away from that or it just it just comes whatever i definitely don't steer away from it um i don't make a ton of political stuff myself but that's just because you know unless you count like you know obviously there's certain movies and like like music and nature is like very political and like that's the stuff like i delve into but like my girlfriend for instance she makes a lot of political stuff we collab on a lot of political stuff especially buttons um, and it's on the table, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not hiding it, and I have no problem wearing my politics. You know, I am a gay woman, my girlfriend is biracial, like, a lot of these, you know, political issues, quote-unquote, are personal issues. So I, I don't really feel, like, if, like, if someone doesn't want to buy something from me because they don't want to go to, you know... The queer girl, that's fine. I don't need your money. I don't want your money. That's that's yeah. totally fine by me. Yeah. Well, that we discussed earlier, it's like, it's not for you then. Right. It's not for you. Yeah. And I'm not going to hide who I am to make somebody more comfortable who is actively trying to make my personhood be erased. Like, that. that's not going to happen. Uh, it brings me to something that's happened to a friend of mine, and I think this happens a lot with actually with women online selling and women artists in general is that people start to discuss that if you did this about appearance or something like that, you could probably sell more. Have yep. you ever gotten that any? Because I know a lot of artists have. Um, I've definitely, not so much in terms of my physical appearance, but definitely uh, I've been told that I should keep my, my politics separate. Mm -hmm. um, I've lo I lose followers on Instagram every time I post something political. And again, that's fine. I'm not for you. I can't separate the two. If people can, that's their choice. I can't. Like, I, have to, I have to live in this body, in this world, and try and create whatever contribution to safety for marginalized people as I can. And I feel like I have a responsibility in that. People have responsibility when they feel like they can. So if that's just like letting the followers I have on Instagram know that like I see you, I see what's happening, I support you, I'm with you. It like sometimes that's an act of resistance too, is just letting people know they're not alone. Cause it can feel really isolating. Like I'm lucky, I live in a big city. I live in a big city that is very progressive and, you know, stuff still gets said to my girlfriend and I. So I, I can't separate it in that way. It's too real. It's too close to home. And I'm told that a lot that like, well, I, you know, I saw your stuff at an event and I was following you because I like Beetlejuice too, but you know, I'm not, I'm not okay with your lifestyle. And now that I know that unfollow, and I'm like, okay, unfollow. See you later. Don't need you. Yeah, that, that, those exact words, you see those, like, all over. People saying those exact words, they're like, for some reason in their head. One, they gotta tell you. They gotta <laughs> tell you that in their head. They're like, I like your stuff, but... And then it's like, your butt is about me as a person. Yeah. Right. And people people don't seem to understand that. Where I'm just like, this isn't... Like, 
you agree to disagree on the movies that you like. You don't have to like the same movies I like, but you can't tell me that you're gonna. We can agree to disagree on my fundamental human rights. Like that's me as a person. That's that's not how that works. That's not an agree to disagree situation because if we agree to disagree, nothing changes for you and everything changes for me. So how is that balanced? Uh, do you think in the times we're in now that there there cannot be any separation between the art and the person? That, that like where people used to be in the past, like they forgive anything the artist did, mm. the like the work. But it seems like now, and I actually think it's a good thing. Like we're looking at artists because we used to hold them up as examples, like. I have a tattoo that says, like, uh, no gods, no idols, you know, no heroes, no villains. Because we held these things up as being, like, these idols of being artists and stuff. And now we're saying, like, oh, we're finding out artists are people. Well, they've always been people. (laughs) Right, exactly. I think there's so much to what you just said. It's absolutely true. And I am I am guilty of that. You know, the things I love, the pop culture I love, I love so much. I've been having a time... Like, a time for the last, like, however long about this Roseanne thing. Like, it is killing me from the inside out. I feel so betrayed by her. It's not even funny. Um, But people are, they're people, you know? And they're not, they're not these gods we elevate them to. You're absolutely right. And I think, I, I don't know how people do it. People are able to separate all the time. They're like, oh, well, you know, I'll still go to such and such as concert. I'll still go to their movie. It's fine. And I can't do that. Especially when it comes to, like, like you're not just talking about, like, oh, you know, he's kind of a jerk. Like, oh, no, he's a rapist. That's a difference. There's a big difference. So, like, he was rude to a cab driver once, and he sexually assaults women. Like, yeah. And when you, when you support people like that, despite, I think what people forget is that that turns into a culture of, you know, complacency. And, like, that complacency allows for things to continue. Nothing changes. And when you're going to the movies and giving, you know, Woody Allen's new movie more money, that means that he's got money for legal fees and he's got money for publicists that are going to try and make his name look better. And you're funding that machine. Yeah. And that's something I can't not think about. Yeah, it's like I've talked to people like I'm never going to like shout somebody down for liking something that was important to them. Totally. But, but totally. there, but there's a difference between continuing to support an artist afterwards. You know, right. like like you're giving them new money after you discovered this thing. You can still like these past movies that you loved sure. and stuff like that. That was, that was a different time. Those were important to you in those times. But Absolutely. if you give them new mo- money, you're basically saying what what they did is fine. In exactly. a lot of ways, in a financial way. So, like, I understand people who are going through hard things and they're like, this is my escapism and stuff. Yeah. But let's not, not grade the area here. Like, you're, you're still supporting it. I'm not exactly. going to shout you down. I'm not going to say you're a bad person for, like, doing it and stuff like that. But you got to admit that what's going on is there. Right. Like, right. you, you mentioned Woody Allen. When I was in, in college, they studied his films a lot. Yeah. They studied films of, of, of a lot of artists like him. And, like, people were like, oh, it's okay because you're studying it. And it's okay because this. And I'm like, no, it still isn't. Like, <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And then you got the pe- uh, people that support him, the other artists that support him. And you, I think it like the one thing that can come of stuff like it is people talking about the issues. Yeah. Like yeah. even if you're like not like, boycott, no. Okay, let's bring up a discussion and talk about that issue of why we support these artists that do these things. Like why right. do we a distance from? The Bill Cosby issue brings that up with a lot of my friends because they were like culturally to culturally to them, he was very important to them. Right. Like he was one of the first like black actors on T V. Yeah. Had his own T V show and stuff. And they're like, Well that's damaging to the, their culture that that happened but they also have to distance themselves and move on. And I'm like, that's what we have to do in a society, I think, in a lot of ways. Yeah, absolutely. I think people conflate like the real person with this iconic character too, and I feel like Bill Cosby is a really good example of that. Like he's not Dr. Huxtable. Mm-hmm. He's Bill Cosby. And people want him to be Dr. Huxtable so badly, but he's not. Yeah. Uh, how do you, how's your workspace? I've talked to people on like my other podcasts, like uh, Cosplay Lighthouse, where we talk to people that are cosplayers about their workspace. What is your workspace like? Is it a big place? Is it all over the house? Is it? It is all over our house. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a back room that has like two tables. It's where my girlfriend spray paints. It's where I 
you know, make jewelry pieces, put everything together. But when it comes to like assembling and light switch covers and buttons, it's like an explosion in here. <laughs> we we've tried to contain things and put things in designated areas, and it just always ends up like. The desk is covered. The kitchen table is covered. We have like trays that like like TV trays on the couch that are covered. Like it's a contained mess. <laughs> <laughs> Our place is similar today. It's like shifting stuff around as you work on projects and it gets shifted around. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's it's hard to to keep things in like one area. It's so difficult. I don't know how people do it. I have I have like my mind's blown that people are able to do it. I'm just like, how? Show me. Is there any like uh artistic form that uh you admire more than others uh is it books like you talked about earlier is it paintings is it movies hmm it's a really good question i feel like books definitely but i also i like i love movies i love movies so much and i feel like the the right words put together in the right way can just like cut right through you and i feel like books and movies both have that and there's just something about that that just like when when something can just like really grip you so yeah there's nothing like it <laughs> Uh, is there one movie you recommend people seeing that isn't like a big movie? Maybe it's something that you like and you're like, you really should see this. Hmm. That's a good question. I feel like the first one that comes to mind is what I keep, I've been talking about so much lately. Um, the Burbs. Do you know The Burbs? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love The Burbs. And I didn't realize how many people hadn't seen it until I kept talking about it. I made a light switch cover recently, and I just, like, I've been on this binge of, like, let's talk about the burbs some more. And I feel like it's so underrated, and it's so dark, and so funny. And, like, Tom Hanks is just amazing in it. Bruce Dern is hilarious. Like, Corey Feldman, like, it's just, it's just so funny and so good. And I love it so much. <laughs> Uh, with those movies like like that, a lot of people don't like know about that movie a lot. Uh, do you find like sometimes when like somebody either through your artwork or you just talking to them and you have a connection through it and it's like boom like yeah that's that's my favorite. There have been plenty of times where I will kind of like like get into a conversation with somebody at an event like somebody who's at my table about some obscure movie that both of us are like, I didn't think anybody else knew that movie. And they're like, I didn't think anybody else knew that movie either. Let me talk about it for entirely too long. <laughs> like, I love that. I love that so much because I'm a fan. Like, I'm a fan of these things. And I like, I like fans. I like when people are excited about stuff. I feel like it bums me out when people feel like they can't be excited mm -hmm. about things like movies and music and books. Like, that's, those things are fun. Like, there are outlets. That, like, you should be excited about that. That's okay. Uh, is there a, a film that, like, and we all have friends who like different stuff. Is there a film that, that maybe your friends like or something like that? You kind of mentioned Twin Peaks earlier is something. Mm -hmm. But something that you are like, hmm, I don't really get that. It's not that you think it's bad, but you just don't get it. Um, uh, so, unpopular opinion, Big Lebowski. <laughs> I've tried. I've tried so many times. I don't get it. I don't get the draw. I'm more of a fan. I like Raising Arizona better than Big Lebowski. I love Raising Arizona. Yeah. See, I love Raising Arizona. But everybody loves the Big Lebowski. And I saw it when it first came out on video, and it was me and my best friend, and we rented it, and we were just like, mm, I don't see see why this was a hit like I, I am good for people who love it but I don't get it and then as an adult I was talking to a co-worker and they were like no no no, you gotta watch it again you gotta, you're too young you gotta watch it again here I'm gonna lend you the DVD and I was like okay watched it again and I was like I just don't get it like I don't get why this is such an enormous cult classic like what am I missing I love pop culture and it's just and and I feel like I hurt everybody's feelings but I'm just like <laughs> Um, oh, sorry, no Big Lebowski for me. Do you have one on the opposite side that you love, and then you try to get other people like you're like you need to watch this, you need to watch this, and they're like, eh. <laughs> um, so yeah, my girlfriend and I really love the movie Airborne. Do you know that movie? Mm -hmm. I don't think I do. So it's from the '90s. Was it was it a Disney movie? No, they just played oh, they just played on Disney Channel a lot. But it's very young Seth Green. Um, and so there's this character Mitchell Goosen who's like a surfer, 
and he gets sent to live with his cousin Seth Green in Ohio, and it's very, very 90s. It's like a surfing, rollerblading, roller hockey movie that is great. Young Jack Black's in it, um, and people either think this movie is terrible, (laughs) or they have never heard of it. (laughs) So... You can see it all on YouTube in its entirety in case you have any interest. <laughs> I think my film would be like, uh, I love this film called uh, Hell Comes to Frogtown. I don't know that one. It's like a Rowdy Roddy Piper movie that he made. Huh? And I used to be obsessive with trying to get people to watch it. I'd be like, you need to watch it. That and Some Kind of Wonderful. I used to be obsessed with Oh, I with love that. Some Kind of Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, that movie wow. would make me cry at the end every time. When she oh. cries, it's like, okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> So good, so good. It's such an underrated one. Because everyone, you know, thinks like Pretty in Pink, 16 Candles, Breakfast Club. But some kind of wonderful, so underrated. Yeah. Uh, and uh, to wrap up things right now uh, with you, and again, thanks for joining me. And Thank you for having today. me. Yeah. And uh, uh, I can't wait till I get my stuff ordered because I think <laughs> it's going to be really cool. I got some stuff for some friends and shit. So I thought it would so be cool. Thank you so much. Where would you like to tell people to go to find you on the internet? So you can find me at my website, which is shopnightowldesigns.com. You can find me on Instagram, nightowldesigns.com. Uh, I have Night Owl Designs on Facebook. Um, Instagram is better. Facebook uh, doesn't always give you your notifications in a timely manner. Um, so that's Instagram and my website is probably the best. Uh, and then you can also email me, Nicole at shopnightowldesigns.com for questions or custom stuff. That's where you can find me. Are you taking custom orders right now? I'm always taking custom orders. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And again, once again, thank you for joining me. And uh, Thank you so much yeah. for having me. <laughs> Are you a fan of the classic Valiant comics? Do you miss Magnus meeting up with Fry? Do you remember when Solar was doing uh, adult things with EXO? Well, okay, no, that didn't happen. But you just never know what could have happened in the Valiant book in those days. From issue to issue, it was the best comics company going. So, if you've ever dreamed in Barry Windsor Smith pencils, you might just want to check this out. I wish I was brave on Tin Pod Radio. (laughs) 